going to step out of my comfort zone. I'm going to make a cargo bike. Never done any modifications to bicycles before. We're going to give it a shot. I have this 24 inch bike, which is actually not that bad of a bike. It was given to me. There's just no, uh, no market for a used 24 inch bike. So I'm going to take this bike and I'm going to cut this here. And I'm going to cut this here. And I'm going to stretch this way out with a flat bed right here and put a little front wheel in the front. Um, now I'm going to be welding here so I'm going to have to take the bottom bracket all apart because I don't want to burn the bearings up. And then I'm going to put, this is the front forks I'm going to put on it. I just bought this little jewel for 20 bucks. And it's going to, I'm going to use this wheel and these forks and cut this and the rest is junk. Um, but before I do that, I recorded this angle because all bikes are a little bit different and if you switch them up, the bike doesn't ride correctly. So I know what this angle is. I know how far this from the ground is so I can set it up in the jig correctly. And on the big bike, I know how far this is to the ground and the bottom bracket is to the ground. So that'll help me set it up and get it welded pretty straight. So bring them in and I'm take them all apart and uh, start cutting. So the little bike broke down pretty easily. I was surprised because it's so rusty. But I was able to get the important parts out of the head tube and I wanted to get it all apart because I'm going to be doing a lot of welding on it. So I was able to get the stem out. And if you've ever, if you've never messed with one of these, what you do is you loosen the nut that's on the very top a little bit and you hit it with a hammer and it breaks this little wedge loose because that nut tightens a wedge up in the head tube or the top of the fork. I was able to get that out with no problem. I was able to um, get the forks off all the bearings. The bearings are the bottom bearings are really rusty, but I have another set from a, another bike I took apart. And the races are good. Everything's good, so it came apart. Set it to the side. Um, I'm just going to cut. I don't know exactly where to cut right now. I'm just going to cut this back for now because this is the only part of this frame that I need, although I might be using the tubing later on. Okay, so this bike's not gonna be quite so simple. I wanna save all the running gear. I wanna save the shifters. It's not an expensive bike, but it has 21 speeds. And I think if the cables were free, they would work. Um, it's got decent brakes. I would like to keep the brakes. I wanna keep the handlebars so I can keep the shift controls and the brakes the brake levers on the handlebars so I'm going to take it apart but I'm going to be a little more gentle than I was on that little frame because I want to keep most of this stuff. Big bike's coming apart nicely the front fork came out just easily no problem the shift cables everything came loose until I got to the bottom bracket. Now this is a pretty decent bottom bracket it's aluminum cranks and sealed bearings it looks like and I got the nut loose and I kind of tapped on it with a hammer, nothing doing. I heated it, can't get the aluminum off the shaft. I made a little homemade jig over here so I could beat on it. I made this little jig so I could slide in there and beat on the bolt and it ain't happening. So I think before I screw this up, I'm going to bring it to a bike shop and let them with the right tools get it apart before I mess it up. So I've got the bike sitting on somewhat of a frame, kind of keep everything straight as I weld it together. Um, I got the proportion between the back axle and the crank set correct. So if I just follow that elevation of the crank set, it's an inch off of the um, guide. Going toward the front, I should be parallel with the ground. Now, the handlebars are going to go right back here where they were, but they're going to be vertical instead of like that. So I have this piece of pipe, but the bearings from the old headset, they don't fit. This pipe's a little bit different from this pipe. This is the original um, headset pipe. The bearings, races fit in there. They don't fit in here. So I'm gonna cut the end square. I'm gonna cut this in half and clean it up and put half of this on the top for the race to fit. And I'm going to put the other half on the bottom for the race to fit 
So I got to grind and clean all the crap off of this thing. So I got the right, the right head tube cut in half and I got the um, downpipe fit up to it and I'm getting ready to make my first weld and man this stuff's thin so I'll probably just make a bunch of spot welds all the way around it so I don't burn it up. I got the first weld done. It's uh, only medium ugly. It's pretty hard that stuff's so thin. So now I'm going to cut the vertical bar right here at this mark and then this top bearing holder will go right on top of that so I'll make that weld so that half of it will be encompassed in this weld so kind of strengthen it all up so my next step will be to cope this uh, top rail to fit this down tube <clears throat> it's going to be 90 degrees to the ground so pretty much like you see it now I just need to make this fit close enough where I can weld it I'm going to spare you footage of me welding and grinding and drilling. It's, uh, it's terribly boring and my welding is so bad nobody should be uh, watching me and trying to learn something. So uh, this is it. Enjoy. I'm not going to post any more welding and grinding. So my next step should be to fit this square bottom tube to this bottom bracket. But I can't get this apart. I don't have the right tool to have it ordered. In the meantime, I think I'll try to cut all this junk and clean it up and get it to fit. Maybe I can put a little tack on it. What I'm worried about is not burning up the bearings that are inside there. So if I can get it to fit and get a little tack on it, then I can put this down tube in place and drill. Here, I'll have to add a stiffener on each side. There won't be anything left. And then I can keep on going. But right now, this is going to be an issue. I don't even know if I can get my little grinders in there to clean all that stuff up, but I'm going to give it a shot. That went pretty well between the uh, angle grinder and the little uh, die grinder and the little belt sander. Cleaned up pretty good and it never really got super hot, so so far I'm sure the bearings are still good. Now I need to fit this square tube to here, and a hole saw would make the perfect little cut, but I don't have that. So, I'm going to grind it until it fits right, and I might even get brave and put a little tack on it to keep it stable while I work on it. So I've got a good fit where the square tube meets the bottom bracket, and now I'm ready to drill this hole, but if I drill the holes, there'll be nothing left because the tube is the same width as the square stock. So I cut these things out, and I'm going to weld one to each side right here before I drill to give it some uh, to replace what I'm going to cut away. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the rust past this point and uh, get these welded on and cleaned up and then I'm going to have to go to the store and get a hole saw this size because it's kind of important that this is straight. So I've got my braces weld onto the side of the square tube and I bought a hole saw the right size and I drilled it so now the down tube is sitting pretty that's where it needs to go um, now I need to decide how far forward I'm gonna go with the storage part before I turn it up to catch the front forks and that I don't really know time to go to YouTube okay this is hurting my head but I think I'm getting here I want the storage platform to be 27 and a half inches so I have a mark right here <clears throat> so that's one dimension that I know now I know that the back wheel is six inches bigger than the front wheel so half of that is three inches in the radius and I have the um, the back axle actually happens to be three inches above the um, jig so I need to put the front axle on the jig that takes care of that extra three inches so that'll make the tires the same. And I know that the front headset needs to lean back 20 degrees because I checked it on the original bike before I took the bike apart. And it is, according to my speed square and my level, it is really, really close. Right there. Got it kind of barely propped up here. So. If I put the front wheel on right here and I go from a straight line from the front of my bed 
to the thing, I have a lot of playroom, so I can move the whole front axle back because the shorter, the more less awkward it's going to be. And my only limiting feature is that I'm going to connect this point to this point and have room for the tire. So actually, I could even curve it, which would make the frame even shorter. Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, that's what I'm dealing with now. I'm trying to connect this to this. I've got to keep the height right. I've got to keep the angle right. I've got to make sure whatever I put in there doesn't hit the tire. And other than that, there's nothing to it. Okay, so I cut two bevels on the square tubing to get it going upwards. And now the front head tube is at the 20 degree mark that I want. And if I hold the tire up here, I got a lot of clearance. So I think what I'm going to do is cut this off horizontally and then cut this tube parallel with this and I can weld this to this because I can slide it back a little bit. And this one I think I have some the rest of that tube. I think I'll just come out straight with a short piece of tube. Um, most of these bikes they just weld. They clean this steel off and they weld this square tube to the head tube. But that only gives me one weld and my welds are not the best so if I do it this way I'll have two welds holding that thing on there and it's a pretty high stress load when you go down the road bouncing all that weights transferred to that little connection right here so I'll cut this parallel with the ground and cut this parallel with this square tube and weld it Okay, we're coming along. I got the top cut to fit. I got this sealed up. I just need to add a piece onto this one and then I'll trim it to fit. Then I think I can I think I can go ahead and weld this part together. I don't know, uh, I don't think there's anything stopping me from welding the front part. And the uh, and the vertical tube. Well heck, I can weld it all together. I can just tack that uh, bottom bracket. I don't want to weld it and get it hot and smoke the bearings, but I could tack it in place. Yeah, we're getting close here to getting some welding done. I got my 20 degrees. I got clearance on the wheel, although it's a little tight, but I can always lop that corner off. Um, everything's straight. Looks copacetic. I'm going to weld it. No turning back now. This part of the front forks goes into the bottom. I got the race back in. And it'll be in and then everything below the aluminum will be gone. And the handlebars will go in the top. And the handlebars lock into this tube. So what I'm going to have to do is split this tube and extend it this long with something. It doesn't have to fit. It just has to be this long. And finish taking this apart. I'm all welded out except for the bottom bracket, which I don't want to heat up too bad. I got a couple tacks on it. So it's coming along. Might be good. So I got lucky. I found a suitable pipe. So I got the first part of the headset on and I got a bearing dropped in. And the bearing races around, so I'm going to drop this through the top and I'm hitting the bump. I'll just put it in there so I can fill it. little wells is poking out on the inside there. I'm going to have to get the pencil grinder and clean it out. No big deal. So this needs to go right there. This is right there. So I need to take it out and cut off one and five eighths inches and weld this onto there. One and five eighths. Okay, the bearings are on, but it's not greased because I'm sure it'll come out again. Just had a 
modified stationary panic attack, put it together, and it wasn't turning worth a darn. And I thought I had welded the uh, extension crooked, but what the deal is, the upper race and the bottom race, they're not the same. They're a little bit different. So I had them backwards, swapped them around. Everything's lovely. So this is where I need to attach the steering arm to the bottom of the steering tube. And I just have a parallel mark to the bottom. I'm going to trim it a little shorter. I'm trying to get it up off the ground a little bit. It sticks down lower than the chain wheel. And uh, I don't want it to like grab on grass and stuff and make the bike go in the wrong direction. So the front steering linkage is a little weird because this is aluminum casting. And it's forced onto this steel shaft. And I was just going to cut it all off and just weld to the steel but I think the aluminum is holding the bearing race so I didn't want to do that so I cut it thinner it's got these big huge holes in it and I uh, I cut a steering arm out of steel and I put two big bolts in it and the nuts are almost big enough to fill up the holes um, when I take this apart for the final time to paint I'll fill those holes with epoxy they fit pretty tight just like they are so, well, I'm going to put that there, put the auto washer, one, so this is my steering linkage for now, I drilled a quarter inch hole because I don't know what size pivot I'm going to get, I just wanted to do something so I could make like a mock up, see if it's going to work or not. I've got the front pivot in place. Um, kind of guessing at this. I have it low enough where the uh, tie rod will be beneath the uh, storage area. And I have it from the quarter inch hole to the center of the wheel is about five inches. And that's the same as the between the center of the steering shaft and the hole in the back. So I'm gonna give it a little weld. I'm not gonna go crazy because this is a guess, but I think I'm close. Okay, I did a mock-up for the steering linkage. It's just flat bar. I did that because it's easy to work with. And it appears to be pretty close. I'm gonna uh, take the bike down and go roll it around the parking lot. And I don't have a chain on it, otherwise I might could even ride it. I'm going to make this out of a um, rectangular tube and it's pretty strong and i got to buy some swivel joints because it twists as it turns. So I'll take it out of here and see if I'm even on the right track. So I pushed it around the parking lot and I learned three things. One, the black ooze that used to be the handle grips is coming through my blue tape. And two, the reaction time is too slow. You have to turn the handlebars too far each way to make corrections. So I'm going to rearrange this to get this shaft in a little closer. And the third thing I learned is the C-clamp is no, no way to hold that. It, it wouldn't hold it tight. It kept moving around. But uh, I think I'm on the right track. I, I don't think I'm too far off. I'm going to have to drop the steering column again and redo that thing a little bit. So I had a conflict with the um, tie rod and hitting this. So I want to put it on the bottom, but to keep it from hitting the bolt heads, I cut them off almost flush and then welded them a little bit. So now I think if I put a washer or two under my pivot, I won't have that interference with the bolt heads anymore. So I'm going to put this back together. That was sweet, it worked good. It turns a little too sharp one way in that it flips over backwards and the steering gets stuck. That's just an adjustment. I'm gonna uh, probably wrap up this video here. And where we go from here is 
I have to increase the bracing on some of the wells, the high tension parts. I'm going to cut this joint up here and get it away from the front wheel a little bit because it's too close. And what? I'm going to order the pivots for the steering and I won't make the permanent tie rod until I get the little pivots in my hand. And dang, everything's lovely. Finish the welding, start painting. Oh, I got to make the, uh, got to make the basket. That's the big deal. Got to make the uh, rack. That'll be the next video. Thanks for watching.